Good evening. And welcome to LISC's 30th Anniversary Gala. I'm Ray Suarez. I'm the senior correspondent on PBS's NewsHour and your Maestro de Ceremonios for this evening. I am also, like all of you, a fan of LISC and what it's accomplished over the last three decades. Tonight is a celebration of community development, really a celebration of community impact. You can't help but think about how far we've come since Howard Cosell's broadcast in the 1977 World Series when that tire company's airborne camera was flying over Yankee Stadium and he said, ladies and gentlemen, the Bronx is burning. LISC made its community development loan, just its first community development loan, just three years later. And today, $11.1 billion in LISC investments later, here we are, recognizing 30 years of work that's shifted the outlook for whole swaths of the country. It is something to celebrate. Pat your neighbor on the back and give yourselves a hand. I suggested you pat your neighbor on the back since so many of you are so bad at taking credit for anything. I thought it might, it might go better that way. To continue our evening, it's my pleasure to introduce LISC's chair for the last 12 years, Robert Rubin. You all know Bob Rubin as a leader in global finance and economic thought and development for decades, most especially his work as a key White House economic advisor and as Treasury Secretary during the Clinton administration. What might be less well known is his commitment to the recovery of struggling communities. He's diligently advanced the notion that neighborhood revitalization is critically important both to the people who live there and to our national economic strength. That's reflected in the policies for which he advocated in government and the work he's done since at LISC. Please help me welcome LISC Chairman Robert Rubin. Thank you, Ray, and, and, and thank you for being with us. On behalf of all of my colleagues at LISC, let me add my welcome to Ray's. We thank you for being with us on what is really a momentous occasion. In many ways, tonight, as you will see, is about looking forward as well as looking back. And as all of you know, while much has been accomplished in community development, far too many of our people still live with conditions of blight, little employment opportunity, inadequate school and health care, and much else that is deeply dysfunctional. And this is vitally important, not only to the individuals and the families most directly affected, but to all of us, no matter where we may live or what our incomes may be. In a rapidly transforming and complex global economy, the social costs that could be saved and the productivity gains that could be had by bringing the residents of our inner cities and distressed rural areas to the economic mainstream are of central importance to our nation's competitiveness and to our country's economic future. And the issues of distressed communities are not intractable. There are approaches to these issues that have been proven by significant lasting effect. At LISC, we bring these approaches together into a strategy called Building Sustainable Communities, aimed at transforming struggling neighborhoods into healthy communities. That starts with addressing blight, substandard housing, vacant lots, abandoned buildings, and much else. And that has been the overriding focus at LISC for 30 years. When I was at Treasury 
and first heard about LISC, I was astonished at how much physical restoration had been accomplished and was struck by how this had been done with a remarkable combination of neighborhood leadership through CDCs and other leaders, including local advisory groups of LISC, working with central funding and technical advice from LISC. It was that model and LISC's practical effectiveness which led me to be so pleased to have the opportunity to become chairman of LISC as my first activity when I left Treasury. While physical restoration remains central to our mission, over the years, under the leadership of our outstanding Chief Executive Officer, Michael Rubinger, we've become convinced that sustainable change requires more than remedying blight. Healthy communities need quality schools, creative educational programming, community health clinics, safety, parks, jobs, and much else. Building sustainable communities is a comprehensive community development strategy which addresses all of that and more. And with the continued support and help of our local and national partners, many of whom are here tonight, we believe that this strategy can change the lives of millions of people and meet a vital national, economic, and moral imperative. That is what LIST set out to do 30 years ago, and that is what we still seek to achieve as we go forward into the future.